And time now to take a brief look at some of the other stories making news in science this week with a science report. A new study recommends limiting children's recreational screen time to less than two hours a day. The findings, reported in the Lancet Medical Journal, also recommends that 8- to 11-year-olds have between 9 and 11 hours of sleep a night and at least an hour of daily physical activity. Researchers found only 1 in 20 US children met all three recommended guidelines. They found that on average, children spend three and a half hours watching screens for entertainment, which displaces sleep or other cognitively challenging activities, which may interrupt the stress recovery cycle needed for growth. A new study warns that the immune systems of killer whales, as well as their ability to reproduce, are at extreme risk due to contamination of polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs, despite there being a nearly global ban in the chemicals for over 30 years. PCBs were chemicals commonly used in electronics. Now, a report in the journal Science warns that the ongoing PCB threat affects more than half of the world's orcas. It says that over the next 100 years, whale populations near industrialised regions and those at the top of the food chain are at a high risk of population collapse. Well, the United Nations Atomic Energy Agency couldn't find them, so Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has exposed Iran's top-secret nuclear warehouse. It turns out it's in the very heart of Tehran. The Israeli Prime Minister also disclosed the location of three illegal Iranian missile factories in Beirut. Netanyahu provided the corroborating evidence to the United Nations General Assembly, giving the coordinates and warning that the Islamic Republic is now dispersing 15 kilograms of radioactive material throughout Tehran in order to hide it from UN atomic weapons inspectors. The United Nations General Assembly was told this evidence proves Tehran has not abandoned its nuclear weapons program and is simply hiding it. Delegates were told the secret atomic warehouse is being used for storing massive amounts of equipment and material from Iran's secret nuclear weapons program. Paleontologists have discovered an older relative of the Brontosaurus seropod dinosaur in South Africa. A report in the journal Current Biology says the fossils of the 12-ton, 200-million-year-old behemoth were unearthed on a farm on the border of South Africa and Lesotho. They say the gigantic herbivore was one of the first four-legged seropods, but it had yet to develop the elephant-like legs exhibited by most other seropods. Seropods are those dinosaurs with elephant-like bodies and legs, a very long neck and small head at one end, and a long tail at the other. Just think of Dino from the Flintstones. The new dinosaur has been named Lida Mardi Mafubi, which means a giant thunderclap at dawn in the African Sesotho language. There's been another major security breach at Facebook, with a social media giant confirming that more than 50 million profiles, including that of the company's boss Mark Zuckerberg, have been hacked. Hackers have exploited a fault that affected the view as feature, which lets people see what their profiles look like to someone else. The tech giant was forced to log out over 90 million accounts to help resolve the issue. With the details, we're joined by Alex Sahar of Reut from IT Wire. There was a vulnerability in the viewers that allowed people to upload a happy birthday video, and somehow that gave them access to these tokens. And these tokens were like little keys that allowed you to log back in without having to re-sign in every single time. And the hackers were able to harness those and then break into people's accounts and take them over, including Mark Zuckerberg and his sister, Sheryl Sandberg. And uh, Facebook first announced that it was 50 million. And then they said, look, we've reset the tokens on a total of 90 million accounts. But the clear uh, lesson to be learned from here, and you know, the interesting thing is this hack was detected a year ago, over a year ago. It's taken Facebook a long time to figure this out. And they saw a surge in this view as activity, which tipped them off, so they say, into realizing something was amiss. Now, what it shows is that you shouldn't be using your Facebook login to log into online services because there's also a worry that people were able to use these digital tokens to log into other online services that were authenticated by your Facebook username and password or by a Facebook digital token. So it's a bad idea to use your Google Twitter, Facebook, to log into other sites. You should use a username and password that is separate, you know, that's basically attached to your email. And also, you know, reconsider whether you need to use Facebook at all because they have a long history of security breaches and they say they take it seriously and yet problems keep happening. And of course, that's not the only thing Facebook are in the news about right now. The uh, issue with fake news is still a big one. Facebook say they're working on it, but they haven't done much. Well, look, I mean, the, the problem is that it's, it's hard for, for Facebook to uh, have an algorithm that is trying to stop people from sharing content.